Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. Today's pen is on loan for review, courtesy of local pen friend Janice Butterworth. This is the Manuscript ML1856 in a finish called Oyster. Manuscript is a new name to me, but it's a company with a great deal of history going back to, you guessed it, 1856. They are handmade, turned acrylic resin pens made in Britain or England, or UK, or all of the above, whatever fits. I looked into the company, and they are, to borrow a phrase from an old friend of mine, fascinating. <laughs> so, let's look at this gorgeous pen, and look at this interesting pen company, right now. So, here we are with the manuscript ML1856 fountain pen. What I want to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, and some measurements, and provide a writing sample. And please stay tuned after the writing sample where I'll discuss what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. I'm also going to delve into a little bit of history of the Manuscript Pen Company. As I said in the introduction, this pen is on loan from a pen friend, Janice. Thank you, Janice. So I don't have any unboxing or packaging. However, from finding other reviews of this pen, I take it the pen comes in a very nice vertical cardboard box that can double as a display stand. The company goes back to 1856 when it was established as D. Leonard Company in Birmingham, England to manufacture pen nibs. Sometime in the late 1800s, they merged with competitor T. Hessen and Company and even had a hand in the development of the early ballpoint pen. After World War II, D. Leonard merged with Highly Pens, which continued as Highly Pens until the 1980s, when it was restructured into the Manuscript Pen Company. Since then, Manuscript has become well known for its focus on calligraphy tools and materials. This line of ML1856 fountain pens with 1.1 and 1.5 stub nib options, in addition to the medium nib, is a relatively new offering for Manuscript. It looks like it was released sometime in 2018. This line is available in seven different colors and finishes, and can be fitted with a 1.1 stub or a 1.5 stub nib as options. The material here is lovely and called Oyster. It is acrylic resin, which Manuscript says is Italian. Let's start from the top, where we see a rounded finial with a crested medallion, which has the manuscript logo. The medallion crest on the finial is screwed into the finial with a Phillips screw from inside of the cap, which also holds this clip in place. The clip is very stiff and has 1856 and two divots stamped into it. It isn't very elegant looking, considering the elegant overall shape to this lovely pen. The cap tapers up to a point which you can actually feel where it straightens out and merges seamlessly with the barrel, which is straight until here, where it tapers down again. But again, you can feel that shift right there, like it's a ring almost, and it tapers down to a rounded end. I must say that the material is well polished and silky smooth and the way the pen is smooth from top to bottom with almost seamless separation between the cap and barrel is very very nice. The cap unscrews with about one and a quarter turns. One, yeah about a one and a quarter turns to reveal a section made of the same material as the cap and the barrel that beautiful oyster resin. Let's get a close-up of the nib. It has some really nice scroll work. And there is an M stamped into it for medium. And then there's a stylized M laser engraved into the top of that, uh, which I assume is the, the uh, manuscript logo. This is, in fact, a Yovo nib, and is, as I say, a medium, and there is the plastic feed. 
The nib and feed unscrew and replacement nibs are available from retailers. I found some on cult pens. That's good if you're a calligrapher because you can swap out your writing nib for a calligraphy stub and the pen becomes dual purpose. The threads on the section are very, very smooth and you don't feel them at all. But that step down from the barrel is very steep and although it's not sharp per se, you can really feel that step down. Of course, I understand why that step down is there. That's so that the cap and the body can merge together with that seamless look, which I quite like. The section itself is concave in shape and has a small lip towards the nib and is surprisingly small for such a large and girthy pen. The section unscrews from the barrel and we see it takes a standard international cartridge. This one has black ink in it. I tried putting another standard international cartridge in there, uh, like piggyback, and the barrel would not close all the way, so it doesn't take two. But because there's no metal here and there's no metal there, I'm assuming you can eyedropper this pen, which would have quite a good capacity, I would think. You would need to slather on the silicone grease on those threads to make sure it doesn't leak. I would worry that uh, this alabaster-like finish what might uh, stain, however, depending on the ink that you'd use. Though some of the darker finishes this pen is available in might work as an ED. Do you have ED? Oh yes, but I smeared a bit of grease on it and it works fine now. The cap does post, but not deeply or securely, which is a bit disappointing because that taper is so nice. You think it would taper to the point where it would allow that, that cap to sit a little bit deeper. Um, it just, it's just waiting to fall off and the pen becomes uh, comically large. Dearest Augustine, I do hope this latest damp has not aggravated your gray lung. Dip, 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 dip. Matters stateside have taken a tragic turn as this year's gourd crop has fallen prey to a rather unexpected infestation of salt marsh cutworms. Dip, 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 dip. Peter, it's four in the morning. Come to bed. Marital concerns continue to bedevil me. At that point. But, unposted, the pen is very comfortable in the hand. If you have a larger hand than mine, you might find this a little short for you. Bigger hands might not like this section either. That goes down to about nine millimeters there. But it is fairly long. So if you do like writing down close to the paper and close to your nib, this section is rather comfortable. Now, let's look at some size comparisons. So here we are with the manuscript ML1856. And next to a Moonman C1, a Jinhao 159, a Fully Wen Ancient Civilizations, and a Moonman M6. All fairly large size pens. Let's look at them posted. Here we are with the pens posted. You can see we've got some pretty large pens here. Uh, the C1 doesn't post, so I've set the cap to the side. I wouldn't consider that the manuscript actually posts, but I put the cap on just to see the entire length of the pen. The Jinhao 159 actually posts better than all of these pens. And then the uh, Fully Wen Civilizations actually posts, but becomes very, very long and very back weighted. And then the M6, it's a lovely sized pen. You can write with it either posted or unposted, but you can see all the nibs are fairly large, but the smallest section on all five of these pens is the manuscript. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. Here we are back with the writing sample portion of the review. 
This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the manuscript ML eighteen fifty six. It is in oyster finish and it is a medium steel nib. Now you notice a bit of a skip there. I'll talk about that in a moment. The ink is just a standard black. Cartridge. Let's check the wetness. It is actually pretty wet and uh, it flows very nicely. But uh, that skip at the beginning, when I uncap this pen after not using it for a bit, it uh, tends to have hard starting issues, uh, which I'll discuss when we talk about the likes and don't likes about this pen. As to line variation, it is a medium nib. That's no pressure. That's a little bit of pressure. It's fairly stiff. There isn't a lot of line variation to be had, and you're not going to get much anyway, starting off at a, uh, a medium line. Of course, if you wish line variation with this pen, considering manuscript are known for calligraphy, getting the 1.1 or the 1.5 stub options would make sense. Let's listen to it right. So, this is a very, very smooth nib. I was instantly taken with the ultra smoothness of this nib. It also has some really interesting feedback, like uh, graphite pencil on paper. So, in addition to having some very nice feedback, a smooth nib uh, with feedback is a very interesting combination. I really enjoy writing with this. I've written with it for a couple of days. That combination of a smooth wet nib with a black ink immediately made me, immediately brought back my drafting days and I started uh, doing all kinds of lettering. And making all kinds of circles and arrows. The old days. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? 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 Oh well. I like, <laughs> I really like this pen and this black ink. And as to some reverse writing, yeah, I'm not even going to try. It's, it's tearing up the paper here. And some quick writing. So there you have it. The manuscript ML 1856. Now, what do I like and what do I not like so much about this pen? Well, there's a lot to like about this pen. When Janice sent me photos of her pens and asked if there were any in the collection that I'd be interested in trying, my eye immediately went to this pen. I had no idea what it was, 
but the elegant look of the curves and the seamless mesh of the cap and the barrel are instantly attractive. It may not show well on the video, but the acrylic resin is like alabaster with uh, lots of nuance and depth. The fact that the pen could be an eyedropper as well is also a nice feature. And the large smooth glass nib with some very nice feedback is the main draw, pardon the pen, um, pun, of this pun. I, I mean, pen. We, we intend to prove that the <laughs> prosecution's case is circumstantial and, 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 oh. <laughs> there are some drawbacks, however, with this pen. The biggest drawback is the price. The pen is currently listed at Colt Pens for 104, and uh, I don't know what those are, cents or what. 104 and 17 cents euros um, or around 160 Canadian dollars. I take it that this is actually a reduction from their initial price point of around 140 euros when it was announced. Uh, that's around 213 dollars Canadian. So more reasonable but still pretty steep for a steel nib. When writing with this pen over the last couple of days I noticed that the pen would hard start whenever I had capped it and put it away for a while, like it did up here on the M. Right there, on the M. So there is no cap liner in this pen, uh, and there's no step milled into that acrylic either for the section to butt up against uh, to seal off the nib from drying out. I've seen that on a lot of pen, B almost all pen BBS pens have a little step milled into the inside of the cap to seal it off. It should be an easy thing to do to put a step in there. And speaking of milling, I find it odd that the cap tapers to a point here where it straightens out across the seam and then it tapers again there. You can actually feel that rib. It's not really a rib, it's just a ridge. I don't understand why it isn't tapered all the way up to here and then tapered down there, or better yet, it curves up to here and then curves down to there. I th would think they'd be able to mill that. If they could mill that uh, curve into that section, I'm sure they could mill that. But again, I'm nitpicking there. It's a minor thing, but once you know that's there, you, you know it's there for my tautology of the day. If you don't stand for anything, you don't stand for anything. If you don't stand for something, you don't stand for anything. Price aside, the biggest problem for me with this pen is this thin section. I don't understand why it's so thin on such a thick, girthy pen. I like the girth and weight of the pen. It's actually not a heavy pen, but I mean, it's got, it's substantial in the hand. And then you get down to this small section. It's uh, a bit odd looking and it's a bit odd feeling. It's disappointing when you remove the cap and see a section that tapers to nine millimeters. Even if it only went to 10 millimeters there, it would be better. But again, these are my observations based on the pen in my hand. Your mileage will definitely vary. Your mileage may vary. And if you have smaller hands, this incredible nib on this gorgeous pen might be enough for you to pounce on it. So thanks go out to Janice Butterworth for providing her lovely and well-loved manuscript ML1856 for loan and review. It's very generous of a pen lover to hand over their prize writing instrument to a stranger to handle and then actually criticize. Well, there he goes again. This is a beautiful pen of which you can be justifiably proud. Just a reminder that you have until midnight tonight, May 20th, 2020, Pacific Standard Time, to post a comment on the Fully Wen 815 video uh, to be entered into the giveaway for that pen. And watch my community tab and the comment section for the announcement of the winner tomorrow morning. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification when new videos are posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. <laughs>